Hey guys, hope you're all doing well um, and that your families are safe and healthy. Um, I'm excited to try this virtual learning with you um, and I hope you all keep an open mind and know that you can reach out to me at any time with questions via email. All right, so we're going to start today's screencast with a joke just to lighten the mood. I know it's been a little weird out there lately, right? And there's a lot of scary news, but I have a little joke for you to start today. So what did one math book say to the other? You think you've got problems. <laughs> I like that one. Anyway, um, today we're going to start with a question. All right, when reading a good book or watching a great movie, which part do you remember the most typically? Okay, is it the beginning? Is it the middle, the climax? What do you remember the most? For me and for a lot of people, the ending is one of the most memorable parts of the book or the movie, right? Um, how it ends is also something that everybody really wants to know, right? When you start getting into a, a movie or a book or a TV series, whatever it may be. So with that being said, one of our kind of key like teachings today is that in an essay, a great introduction and really supportive body paragraphs do not mean a whole lot when there isn't a memorable conclusion too. So today's lesson is all about how to write a really memorable, effective, argumentative conclusion. So here are some of the purposes of an argumentative conclusion that you guys should kind of know and digest. All right, the first purpose is to usually make one last effort to convince the reader of your thesis or your claims. Another purpose would be to suggest larger implications of the issue, the problem, right, now that the evidence has been presented. And a third purpose might be to provide a satisfying sense of closure at the very end of the essay. So we're going to look at a few example conclusions that do kind of serve some of these purposes. This one is called um, The High Cost of High Tops, this essay. And it really talks about how um, high top sneakers, you could think about basketball shoes like Jordans or LeBron's Nike shoes or whatever it may be, right? And this essay is kind of arguing that they have negative effects on um, families and, and children in particular. So here's the conclusion. But kids aren't buying leather and plastic. They are buying a dream. The sneakers represent the success that star athletes won at an early age. They may therefore represent a dream that's unrealistic for some teens and distracts them from more realistic goals. That is a very high price to pay for a pair of sneakers. This conclusion really gets into some of the larger implications and effects of these sneakers, of buying them, right, and so forth. Um, the way that it does that really is it says you're not just buying leather and plastic and like feeling like I have a nice pair of sneakers now, right? You might be buying the idea that, you know, if you wear the sneakers, you're going to definitely make it to the NBA. And so it really kind of takes, you know, this um, argument and stretches it to some of the greater kind of impacts that these buying these sneakers could have on people. All right, here's another uh, conclusion. So this is from an essay that's about whether beef is a healthy food or not, and this argument argues that it is. Here's the conclusion. Bottom line, beef is not as bad as some people claim. Eaten smartly, it's actually good for you. So go grocery shopping with confidence, buy and eat that lean steak, and be healthier. This one definitely makes one last effort to convince the reader that eating beef is fine, right? In fact, it's good for you. Um, it seems like the first two sentences really kind of restate the thesis. It says, bottom line, beef is not as bad as some people claim. Eaten smartly is actually good for you. Um, so that is driving home that um, argument. Here's a third example. It's from an essay called The Heat is On, Welcome to Life in the Greenhouse. And this has to do with global warming and what people should do about it. One thing is certain. Efforts to turn down the heat will have to involve the entire world if they are to succeed. Climate change is truly a global issue, says Trenberth, and one that may prove to be humanity's greatest challenge. 
this conclusion helps provide a satisfying sense of closure. Okay, the phrase or the sentence, one thing is certain, really brings us to that end, right? And we feel like we have closure because we know for certain at least one thing, um, which is that we must kind of band together as a globe, right? As, as a global community to tackle the problem of global warming or climate change, which could be a great challenge. All right. So in addition to knowing these purposes, right, for writing an argumentative conclusion, Mr. O'Brien and I wanted to share with you five strategies that are very helpful to use when writing an argumentative conclusion. The first one is instruction or teaching the reader what they can do about the issue that you're dealing with in your essay. The second is making a strong or powerful statement. It might even be kind of like bold or surprising to some readers. This will probably be a shorter conclusion, could be just two sentences, where you say why the issue is important, right, and, you know, why it's so important that we do something about it and what we should do, potentially. Then there's an anecdote, um, which is just a brief story that captures the essence of the issue. And a lot of you actually used anecdotal hooks in your introductions. Right, where you told a short story that kind of got the reader interested in the topic, you could conclude where you tell a short story that um, you know is going to leave the reader with something to think about about why the issue might be important. Finally, you could ask a pointed question. So at the very end of the conclusion, some people like to ask questions that leave the reader thinking about their claim and their reasons, um, and also just the issue in general and what next steps might be. And finally, you could try echoing your claim. All right, so this means circling back to um, the introduction and the thesis and so forth that you wrote there, presented there. And with this one, you do want to be a little careful not to repeat yourself too, too much. All right, so your next task is going to be to look at a series of conclusions, um, including the three that we just looked at and identify which of these five strategies is being used in each. Let's do the first one together. So on Google Classroom, guys, you will find this doc, which is called Argumentative Conclusion Writing. You'll also find these slides together with the doc. But in the doc, you do have the notes that um, I would probably ask you to take in class um, on the slides if we were in class together. So we're going to do the first one together. Um, it says the high cost of high tops. So this is the one that we looked at first in the slides. But kids aren't buying leather and plastic. They're buying a dream. The sneakers represent the success that star athletes won at an early age. It's an unrealistic dream that distracts them from more realistic goals. And that is a very high price to pay for a pair of sneakers. Okay. Right off the bat, I'm going to say that I think some of the language in here is very strong, powerful, surprising to some, and maybe even hurtful to some, right? To say that um, the dream of becoming a professional athlete is unrealistic for many teens, it may be true, but it can actually kind of hurt, right? And so that's what makes this language kind of powerful. Um, the idea that it distracts teens from more realistic goals, and this language about um, you know this distraction being a very high price to pay for a pair of sneakers is also pretty bold, and could kind of sting a little bit for people who you know buy the sneakers and and do dream of going to um, the NBA or whatever it may be, All right? So. Right off the bat, I'm kind of thinking it's strong statement just because of the strong language that I see in this conclusion. But let's make sure that it is by eliminating some of the others. This conclusion is not instruction or teaching the reader something they can do about the issue, right? It's not suggesting that they go out and buy low top tennis shoes, right? So for that reason, we can eliminate instruction. It's not really telling a story. There's no character, right, that bought the sneakers and did not go on to be a professional athlete or whatever. There's no pointed question. We know this. Um, this is pretty easy to figure out, right? Because there, 
there is no question mark anywhere in the conclusion. All the punctuation, um, you know, is periods. And then echo would be the last one, which would be circling back to the thesis or the claims. Um, I don't think that this conclusion really does that. I think the whole thing about buying a dream, not um, a pair of sneakers that will change your life, um, is maybe one of the reasons that this writer has for saying these sneakers are kind of harmful, right? Um, but I don't think that the overall thesis or claims are echoed in here. And so for that reason, we can definitively say that this conclusion makes a strong statement. Okay, so your task now is to go on and read the remaining example conclusions. Some of them you haven't seen before and some of them you have. So here's the beef one. Um, and fill in what you, which strategy you think is being used. All right, then you can go back to the slides and you um, will have an answer key there. Once you've done that and hit turn in on this, I want you to draft your conclusion in your second draft. All right, that's your main task for today is to write the conclusion to your argumentative draft and you should be using a conclusion strategy you learned today. All right, you're definitely gonna meet these three purposes or at least you know two out of the three and then you're gonna try to either provide instruction, make a strong statement, include an anecdote, ask a pointed question or echo your thesis. Okay, today is really about conclusion writing guys. Um, but you can flip around. You can go back and work on your intro. I know some of you still need to add a hook to your introduction or comment on the current situation, the past situation. Um, you might still have to finish up your counter-argument paragraph or whatever. You can take time to do that as well if you finish your conclusion today. Um, I want you to know that on these slides, which are on Google Classroom, there is also for at least my sections um, a sample conclusion that has to do with my prompt, which was about video games versus outdoor sports. All right. All right. Good luck and thanks for your attention today, guys.